Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Crow. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, Jason Shellcross back again. Episode 18. We got a very special mock draft challenge episode coming. I am flying solo, so bear with me here. Uh, Alex, we are still waiting on. Uh, he'll be back, I think, a little bit later this week, if we're lucky. Um, as uh, as mentioned, we got a mock draft episode. I'm going to be doing a mock draft. Um, we are going to be challenging ourselves to go running back heavy. And so the challenge would is to uh, to build a team that is competitive with uh, going running back in three of the first four rounds and Alex will hate this team but I don't care because I am actually a fan of the strategy I think it is doable you just got to hit on that mid and late round wide receiver value now with that let's switch over to the mock draft board and here we go here we go Boom. Oh, Alex, I wasn't expecting your <laughs> your appearance. Wow, it appears as if you've uh, decided to to shave that thing on your face. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to go to YouTube. Alex sent me a lovely photo of his freshly shaved beautiful beard is now gone and he has a lovely Lovely, freshly shaved face. Um, and I just felt the need to share that with all of you. So if you if you are not subscribed to us on YouTube, please go to uh, the Fantasy Football Sackos on YouTube. Hit the bell, hit the like button, hit subscribe, do what you got to do. Um, and while you're at it, just follow us everywhere. We're on all the social medias at the FF Sackos on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, we also have our own Facebook page, the Fantasy Football Sackos. So, and TikTok, we couldn't be doing more social media, really. Um, but Alex will not be joining us. This is a solo draft, but I am going to be challenged with, uh, again, going running back heavy. And so I am drafting from the nine spot. And with that, let's uh, let's get this draft going. So the first pick, Alvin Kamara, one overall, never going to happen. CMC, Zeke, Saquon, Michael Thomas. Derek Henry, Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, and then me at number nine. Let's see. Well, Michael Thomas is off the board. It's do I want the ceiling of Tyreek here with the with the run, wide receiver? I'm sorry, running back heavy strategy. Do I go receiver and get one or no? You know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to go receiver here. I'm going Josh Jacobs. I think the guy, we talked about it in our bounce back and breakouts episode. Listen to the last episode. If you haven't, I'd go in depth onto why I think Josh Jacobs is going to have a fantastic season. Uh, I think he could very well finish as a top three, top five running back. He's currently going as like running back 11 in ADP, which is just insane. I drafted him ahead of a couple guys here because I'm so high on him. Now at the turn, uh, see running back heavy. If I go with a running back heavy strategy, I know I can hear Alex yelling at me if I take Julio here because that's not the strategy. I need to keep going running back. Um, heavy in the first round and it's kind of against it if you go running back wide receiver in the first two. So in the spirit of the challenge, I'm going to not go receiver. However, I dislike all the running back value here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take Lamar here. Lamar Jackson at the 2-4 is really... And this, he went after Mahomes, which I think is crazy. I think in most drafts, I I, I kind of hope in most drafts, Lamar goes first, unless I'm, you know, drafting and I'm hoping Lamar is falling to me, then I don't care if somebody in front of me takes Mahomes. But uh, I think I'm going to have a lot of shares of Lamar this season. Now, again, running back in three out of the first four rounds, 
There's not a lot, whole lot to choose from here in the third round. I got Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, Ingram. Let's just get rid of everybody else. Let's look at these running backs. Mark Ingram, Singletary, David Montgomery, Jonathan Taylor. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Gurley because we talked about it again in our last episode, uh, bounce backs and breakouts. I really think Gurley could be primed uh, to f- prime for a return to running back one levels, given his potential usage in Atlanta. Nobody really there to challenge him for carries. I think he still has, you know, I think he still has talent. I don't think he's devoid of talent. Um, It's just a question of the knee. But then again, there was that question last year. And as I said previously, he still had more than 220 carries last season. So his knee held up. Uh, He just he didn't look quite as dominating as, you know, years past 2017 when he was a force. But I'm going to go girly here. And then... Come on, Montgomery. Fall to me. Do it. Oh, I got him. All right. So David Montgomery, his current ADP is 41 overall. That's, I mean, this is what, pick 40. So this is right there. Uh, Any other running backs? I mean, you can look if you can see the screen on YouTube. Uh, After David Montgomery, whose average uh, draft position is 41 overall, there's a 10 spot gap until the next running get, uh running back at uh Jonathan Taylor go, is currently going at 51st overall. So you can kind of tell that there's a built-in tier there as far as uh what drafters are projecting and what people are thinking of these players. I think Montgomery is really going to be a three down back and even if Tariq Cohen is on the field I really think that uh I think David Montgomery is primed to have a phenomenal season. So I am going to take Montgomery here again. We're going running back heavy. And so there's three out of four and now it's receiver time. What do we got? If I reach for a tight end here. Oh, but if Zach Ertz somehow fell to the fifth, that would be insane. I would have to take him. I just would. One more, one more, one more. Oh, he's there. I'm sorry. Zach Ertz. Like, Alshon, there's no Alshon. He's starting the season on the pup. Like, so you got to, you're trying out Deshaun Jackson and freaking Jalen Rager. Like, Zach Ertz could be the tight end one the first half of the season. And I don't trust Deshaun to stay healthy. Like, that didn't happen last year. He played what, one game? And he got a rookie receiver? All right. Man, this is this is really punting here and I'm going to be hurting and but I have some mid and late round targets. We've talked about a whole bunch of guys and I think that they're still going to be there. So, you know what? I'm going with the value there of Zach Ertz in the fifth round. Now, as far as what gets back to me. Oh, man, Debo, if only you were healthy, my boy. Uh, Cortland Sutton is, you know, solid wide receiver, too. I've talked about, I, you know, in our uh, rankings of our uh, wide receiver podcast rankings, 13 through 24, we talk about Cortland Sutton and the outlook on his season. There's a couple good guys left. Uh, let's just filter by receiver. So there's a nice little grouping, Cortland Sutton, Debo, Devontae Parker, Brandon Cooks, and Jarvis Landry. Um, well, it looks like Landry's on the pup, Debo's on the pup. I want, I have no receivers, so I need guys that are going to play. So let's take Cortland Sutton here. That's, I feel like that is pretty obvious. Now, coming back. Round seven, we got a bunch of, it's really a mishmash. A lot of quarterbacks have gone. Murray, Watson, Drew Brees, and Aaron Rodgers are off the board. Uh, Some more tight ends are gone. Darren Waller and Gronk. Gronk went in the seventh. Man, Gronk going as the tight end. One, two, three, four, five, six overall. I'm not a fan of Gronk as the tight end six. I just, he hasn't played football in like, 
two like 20 months why is why did P, why have people drafted him all the way up to go as tight end six in adp must have been a lot of new england drafters recently <laughs> um Ronald Jones in the seventh is huge value. Cam Akers could take over that uh, Rams job. I don't really want to hear about Daryl Henderson. He's way too small. J.K. Dobbins. Oh man, if if this yeah, like if this was a keeper league or something else, like J.K. Dobbins is going to be huge next year. I think um, receivers that went between my picks are Jarvis Landry, Debo, a couple pup guys. Uh, Devontae Parker, who I was hoping and praying would fall to me. Michael Gallup would have been okay with Brandon cooks. Oh my God. He was one away. I would have loved it. If Brandon cooks fell to me, alas, he did not. And so now I'm picking in the seventh and my receivers to choose from include Julian Edelman, Tyler Boyd and Will Fuller. Maybe some Marvin Jones if I'm real desperate. Alex, stop looking at me like that. Well, Jason, this is a really dumb strategy. I don't know why you would ever do this. Oh, well, thank you for that valuable input, Alex. Really appreciate it there, pal. Um, I think I'm going to go with Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, you know, AJ Green is coming back, but Tyler Boyd was excellent when AJ Green was on the field previously. I see Julian Edelman, you know, sitting there. I just, I don't really trust Cam to throw for like anywhere close to 3,500 yards, 4,000 yards. I really think Cam is going to throw for like 3,000. And I don't know if Edelman's going to be the guy to go for a thousand or if he will. I don't know. It's just going to be. And so many people have opted out on that team. Like that's another thing that maybe people have to start considering is who all has opted out. I mean, that's a huge reason why Clyde Edwards Hilaire's uh, draft value skyrocketed because of uh, Damian Williams opting out, but he's had what eight or nine Patriots have opted out so far this season. So including some high profile guys, um, do I want Edelman or do I want Boyd? I'm going to roll with Boyd because I think the ceiling is higher. And uh, Edelman went. And Edelman was the only receiver that went. So staring me in the face at the 8-4. My, let's do a seven-round draft recap so far. Josh Jacobs in the first round. Oh my God, he could be so freaking good. Lamar Jackson in the second, I think is going to be the first quarterback since Cole Pepper to repeat as the QB one this season um, in back-to-back years. Todd Gurley in the third, man, he's going to be a load. Um, David Montgomery again. I have three, three down running backs. Like the, if they stay, if, if these guys stay healthy and like Atlanta can run the ball a little bit, a smidge, and Montgomery's offense gets a little bit better. Now, I wish the Bears had a preseason just so they could figure out who their quarterback was. But either way, I don't think that this offense can be any worse than it was at moving the ball last year. And so I think that there's really nowhere to go but up for Monty this season. So uh, Josh Jacobs, Lamar Jackson, Todd Gurley, David Montgomery could not pass up the value of Zach Ertz going at the ninth overall spot in the fifth round. I mean, that's just, that's incredible value falling to the late high fifties. Um, he should not have fallen that far. Uh, Mark Andrews drafted ahead of him almost, a, I mean, a full round ahead of him, uh, basically. And then Cortland Sutton, Tyler Boyd starting to get that wide receiver core going. Now I do, it's not pretty. The wide receiver room is really not pretty. Um, so I'm going to have to take some swings here. Now I do. I just want to peek because you never know what else is available. Oh, Jordan Howard's there. I really like Jordan Howard a lot this year. Uh, let's just filter by running backs. We have 
Sony Michelle, who's on the pup, he's going to fall on ADP. He won't be there long. Jordan Howard is there. Love him to be an RB2 potential candidate sleeper. James White, you know, his ADP is going to rise, I think, with Sony Michelle going on the pup. Keyshawn Vaughn. He's a great candidate. He could be like a he could be a league winner. Um, but I already have three running backs. I just I don't need it, but maybe it's where the value is. <sighs> Will Fuller, Marvin Jones. You know what? I am I'm going to take Marvin Jones here. I think I like I like Marvin Jones to have a more productive season. Certainly, I believe he will have um, certainly a healthier season than Will Fuller. (laughs) Man, Will Fuller averaging 10 and a half games a season played. That's just the health issues that have surrounded him. I mean, he's just really suffered ever since he came into the league. Now, Now we're getting into this value. This is where I really like, I really like receivers a lot more than I like running backs in the mid and later rounds. Um, I am going to take a couple more running backs just because I like it's again, it's the running back heavy strategy guys. Like I can't just have three or four. So I got to pick up a couple more. Um, who is it going to be is the question. We have Daryl Henderson is the highest ADP right now. He's at 111. I'm not worried about... I don't think he's going to have a real significant role. Zach Moss, I think, could have the goal line carries for Buffalo. Uh, Tariq Cohen, I think, should only be drafted in PPR. Chase Edmonds, I think, is a handcuff. Pollard is a handcuff. Antonio Gibson could be sneaky. Justin Jackson is sneaky. Boston Scott should be owned in basically every league. Uh, Duke Johnson could be a really sneaky play here. Pick here uh, with uh, David Johnson. You don't really know where his health's at and how much play Duke could get at receiver. Uh, Damian Harris. I think his ADP is going to go up with Michelle going out because... You know, Belichick doesn't like to play rookies, but that was Harris last year. And so now welcome Harris, uh, a two year player now. And and I think a, a run, a heavier run offense with Tom leaving town. So I would not be surprised if they tried to lean on the run game. I think they will miss Sony. But does that go to Harris or does that go to Mich- or, uh, to James White? Or does that mean more Burkhead? Man. Um, go back to receiver Darius Slayton, huge ceiling, Henry Ruggs, huge ceiling. Like he's going to be the guy in Las Vegas. Darius Slayton could be the guy in New York, just monster season. Um, fourth running back, fourth receiver. We don't need, I'm already making a mountain out of this mole hill. Hmm. I am, I am, I think I'm going to go Slayton here. I just, I really believe in Slayton. He's, I think he's the most talented receiver on that team. He certainly has the best health history on that team, you know, uh, with Shepard, one more concussion, he could be done for, for good done. Um, and no running backs went at all there. Like it was Jared Cook, Stafford, Danny Jones, who had just got done chatting about Tyler Higby, Noah Fant, and the Ravens defense going in the 10th round. All right. So we are picking the fourth pick in the 10th round. I have four receivers, three running backs. It's time for another running back. Who do I want? Um... You know, I am going to take Damian Harris here because uh, Sony Michelle starting the season on the pup. I really think that they could try to see what they have in Damian. And if he does well, maybe he secures that role and Sony Michelle doesn't have a whole lot to come back to. So that would be that would be interesting. Um, let's see other running backs that went Daryl Henderson, Chase Edmonds, Tariq Cohen, Tony Pollard, and Antonio Gibson was the running back taken a couple spots ahead of me. 
Uh, a lot of receivers have gone. C.D. Lamb, Christian Kirk, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, John Brown, Sammy Watkins, and Sterling Shepard. If Sterling Shepard stays healthy, like the guy is a stud, but he doesn't stay healthy. They have Golden Tate. He doesn't stay healthy. Well, he didn't last year. Um, and um, and I well, what he had a suspension too. So I mean, man. All right, let's look. Let's. Carlos Hyde. Oh, if I'm picking a running back here, it's got to be Zach Moss or probably Duke Johnson. Maybe Carlos Hyde, because I don't know what the status of Chris Carson's hip is. And with Penny having a significant knee issue, maybe uh, maybe Hyde will get some run. I really think that they're just going to let Russ throw more, but. All right, let's look at these receivers. Oh, baby. Jamison Crowder, come to me right in my lap, please. He's not like he's not going to go. He's his ADP is climbing, which I think is a good thing. It's respectable because he should not be going in at the end of the 11th or in the 12th rounds. Like Jamison Crowder, I think, should be like 10th or higher rounds. The guy's going to have a bazillion targets now whether or not he does much with them because they're going to be like a five foot you know depth well that's another story either way i think there's absolutely guaranteed volume coming um hmm yeah i think i have to go jameson there okay so i go jameson no real worries about quarterback or tight end considering I have him locked up already. Now I would not <sighs> had Zach Ertz not fallen to the fifth round. I would not have taken him. I would really only recommend reaching for uh, one either. Well, either, either a quarterback or a tight end. One of those two positions in your first six picks because if you draft them both in your first six picks, like I do, it just really leaves you thin in the way of like bench or replacement players. It, well, for me, it really left me thin at receiver. Um, hmm. Now, but I really think Zert, Zach Ertz is going to make it up at the position. Like crazy, crazy. He went in the fifth. All right. Let's look at these uh, players that are left now. I have two rounds left. I'm really just thinking best available. Um, Big Ben, Cam Newton. I'm not really huge fans of drafting backup quarterbacks. Um, and that goes for all, you know, I'm, this is for one quarterback, not a super flex, just standard flex leagues where you're starting one quarterback. I mean, unless it's like a 16 team league, it's really not necessary. Like you can find guys on the waiver wire regularly without any real issue. So I think giving yourself that extra buffer really isn't needed because by weeks. And even if it's an injury and you lose a guy for a couple of weeks, like you can play matchups at quarterback and do okay. I feel like, um, you know, you just look for the people that are playing like the Giants and the Dolphins and maybe Arizona. Well, Arizona was more weak against the run than the pass. Like people just ran them over. All right. Twelfth round. Look and value. Best available. Uh, Anthony Miller could be a great sleeper here. It gives me another bear to cheer on. I'm uh, I would be a fan of that. Um, hmm, two guys left. At running back, Justin Jackson, Boston Scott, Duke Johnson, A.J. Dillon, Naheem Hines, Carlos Hyde still. Adrian Peterson, Jarek McKinnon, Durinton Evans for Tennessee, LaShawn McCoy of the Tampa Bay Bucks. I don't think he's going to do anything there. Jamal Williams, Anthony McFarland. Really nobody I want. DeAndre Washington, Maybe. It really, it's it's like how much work do they give Clyde Edwards Hilaire out of the gate? Because last season, when uh, when Damian went down, it wasn't the LaShawn Le- McCoy show; it was the Daryl Williams show. 
So, gosh, I wonder if what's Daryl Williams ADP? 229. There you go. Completely not even close to being drafted. Um, Justin Jackson, Boston Scott, Duke Johnson. Huh, let's see. I have five wideouts. I'm probably not even going to draft another one. So, in honor of Alex and his beautiful, freshly shaved face, looking all silly over there in the corner, I will take Justin Jackson, who Alex has tabbed as a potential sleeper this season. If you have not listened to our sleeper podcast, please go back and listen to, I believe it's uh, the first stud Sacco sleeper episode now, or maybe, you know what? I think it was the sleepers and draft values of 2020. Now uh, round 13, um, just buttoning things up here. Um, hmm, You know what? Hey, what's up, future NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver, Alan Lazard, <laughs> getting drafted on my team in the 13th round. <laughs> I can't wait to post this. Alex is going to be so annoyed. Oh, man. All right. Defense and kicker time. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. I'll take the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I'm not of the Alex uh, motivation to draft a, a kicker early to get a stud kicker. I'll just take whatever kicker kicker falls to me. Uh, maybe I mean you could draft kickers over defenses first. Uh, I don't know. I don't really have a strong opinion either way. Um, I probably looking at all the kickers that are left. I probably should have gone kicker first and then just played matchups at, with whoever has the best week one matchup for defense. So given that that's not what happened, I'm going to take Matt Gay because I really think Tampa Bay could have a lovely season under Tom Brady. Now let's, uh, let's look at this team over here. Shall we? Uh, Josh. So this was again, a challenge to go running back heavy, which was, which meant, Running backs in three of the first four rounds. What it really turned into was punting receiver to the sixth round. <laughs> Alex is going to hate this. Although I feel like Court and Sutton in the sixth. You granted it was the beginning of the sixth. I feel like Court and Sutton in the sixth could be a value. I like him more. Who did he go behind? Cortland Sutton went behind Terry McLaurin. I like him more than Terry. He went behind AJ Green. I like him more than AJ. He went behind Marquise Brown. I like him more than Marquise Brown. Like that's, I think, very good value for Cortland Sutton in the uh, the fourth pick of the sixth round. But let's go through the team uh, by position at running back. We have Josh Jacobs, Todd Gurley, and David Montgomery. Uh, Monty's going to be would be flex on this team. And then on the bench, we have Damian Harris, who I think could be in a larger role with uh, Sony Michelle sitting out and Justin Jackson, Mr. Sleeper. And then at receiver, again, we really punted uh, to the sixth round. Corton Sutton was a huge value in the sixth. In the seventh, Tyler Boyd is wide receiver two caliber player with potential like wide receiver one weeks, you know? So that's, I think very good value at the end of the seventh. Marvin Jones was a touchdown machine. Uh, could is definitely serviceable. I would say Darius Slayton at the end of the ninth, again, going for upside, trying to take a swing there. Uh, Jamison Crowder, huge bench, great bye week like matchup guy. Uh, Sam Darnold loves throwing him the ball. You lose Robbie Anderson, you know, freed up a bunch of targets there. That was his main competition. I think Crowder could have a great season. Um, and then lastly, sort of like, you know, maybe one of the first people you drop if he comes out of the gate really slow or if Rodgers falls in love with somebody else. Um, I don't think it's going to happen because Alan, Alan Lazard went to the Iowa State University. I mean, he was such a stud in college. If uh, Iowa State doesn't get a whole lot of respect when it comes to, to draft picks. I mean, 
the guys, even if they're studs, kind of get drafted a little bit low. But um, I really think Ellen Lazard is a good football player and uh, Rogers likes him. So I think he's a fine sleeper candidate. The number two receiver on the Packers this season, I believe. And then Lamar in the second round. I mean, that's he went after Mahomes in this draft. I, I don't really agree with that, but hey, I'll take it. And then Zach Ertz, uh, tight end, huge value in the fifth. So Lamar quarterback, Jacobs Gurley at running back, Montgomery at flex, Zach Ertz at tight end. And then we landed Cortland Sutton and Boyd at receiver with a, a few other guys t- to choose from on uh, bye weeks and whatnot. All right, Alex, that is a beautiful face you have. I think that you are smiling so wide because you just love how this beautiful draft turned out. Um, Shorter episode this week, guys. Again, uh, well, shorter episode this episode of the week. Uh, Just recorded this to uh to try and get something out to you guys um we're excited i think to uh eventually work our way back up to uh two episodes a week alex being a brand new dad obviously there's going to be quite a adjustment period to that and again congratulations to uh alex and his wife hannah huge amazing news um couldn't be happier for you guys. Uh, Alex, looking forward to uh, seeing you again in person and seeing that lovely shaved face in a couple more days. Um, our next episode, we are going to do a uh, a keep. What is it? Uh, draft trade cut episode. So we're going to be talking through three guys that are all going in the same place in ADP and talking through if we would draft that player, if we would uh, trade that player, or if we would cut that player um, based on how we feel about them. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming out, I believe, on Friday. Um, uh, drop a comment in the uh, down below or, you know, reach out to us on any of the social medias. I'll probably end up posting the, uh, the mock draft results to all of our social media. Let me know what you think of the running back heavy strategy. Should I have passed on Zach Ertz in the fifth to try and get another receiver in there? I mean, there's really, there wasn't else. I feel like a whole lot of guys like Marquise Brown, AJ green McLaurin. I think Zach Ertz is the value. There was too good to pass on. Um, anyways, With that, I'm going to move to our lovely social media page. Please follow us on all of our um, social media platforms. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are at the FF Sackos on every social media. We are on all of the podcast listening platforms. Uh, Thank you guys for listening and stay tuned for Friday when we welcome Alex back to the show. With that, Have a good night.